Hi, this is Stan Fitzgerald with Veterans for Trump and Legacy PAC. I'm here with my friend Ron Eller, who is running for Congress. Ron, how are you this morning? Good morning, Stan. It's a pleasure to get the opportunity to speak with you today. Well, I'm joined speaking with you again this morning. Ron, can you tell our viewers a little bit about your background? My background is kind of long and complicated. I'm not a what you call a spring chicken. I went in on active duty in uh, April of 79 and during my military career, I went from the pay grades of E1 to E7. I was a warrant officer and retired as a captain. During my time in the military, I had uh, received such accolades as being selected as Soldier of the Year for Trade Off Force Com, Fort Benning, Georgia. I was non-commissioned officer of the year. I was nominated into the Sergeant Morales Club. I made drug and alcohol person of the year, and I served uh, quite a few years as an enlisted man, as a uh, combat medic. During that time frame, I held such positions as being a squad leader, a platoon sergeant. Eventually, in the mid-80s, I uh, decided to uh, apply for a warrant officer position, went to uh, PA school in the military, and eventually uh, transitioned to being a commissioned officer. And, and my wife and I uh, actually got married right before I went in the military. We've now been married a little over, well, today would make 43 years and uh, three days, to be uh, precise. We have two God, sons. God bless you for that, and congratulations. Thank you, sir. Well, you know, uh, being married uh, is, is a business, it's a relationship, and uh, it's kind of like running the nation. It's kind of like being a platoon sergeant, and, uh, you know, you have to work together for a common good. And that's what I see as the problem for America right now. When you look across America, it is not a red America, a blue America, a white America, a black America. We are all Americans, and we must be united for a common good. Act 1726, since it's Sunday, and I'm getting ready to go to church. From one man, he built all nations, and that's what I think is important that we need to think about. And our founding fathers talked about this. The Bible talks about this in Luke and Matthew. A kingdom that is divided is a house that will fall. Patrick Henry, in his last public address in March 1799, talked about this, how we must be united for a common good for all America. And we all know that famous line out of that speech, united we stand, divide we fall. Well, I'm a uniter. I can bring the people together, and we can work for the common good for all America. Ron, tell our viewers a little bit about your district and, and the state you're running in. The second congressional district of Mississippi basically runs the entire length of uh, the state along the western border. It consists of 30 counties. 65.2% of the uh, district is black. It is D plus 14. So it is an uphill climb for any Republican candidate. And what is uh, really peculiar about the second congressional district, there are 30 counties. When it went under Democratic control back in the 80s, uh, it was affluent. Today, the second congressional district is probably the poorest district in the nation. 16 of those 30 counties are in the top 100 poorest counties in the nation. Five are in the top 10 poorest counties in the nation. That is the economic type plan that they want for all America. Because when I can make you dependent upon the government, then I can control you. And it goes back to what we were talking about, that united we stand, divide we fall. If they can keep you divided as a people, they can control you. We must be united for that common good. We need to work on what I call an E3 principle. E1 is education, E2 is economics, and E3 is energy. Education is paramount for maintaining America's position as a world and global leader. But not only do we need to talk about raising that next generation of children, to be doctors, lawyers, tradesmen, uh, businessmen, but we also need to look at the people that have been incarcerated. If we do not break that chain of uh, incarceration and train them to be productive members of society, that pulls down that whole family unit. And the family unit is the foundation of America. E2 economics, E2 will always be a challenge for the country, but we need to put America first. We need to bring jobs back to America. We need to talk about fair taxation. Too often our political uh, elites put programs in place that uh, uh, do help them and their friends and uh, benefit them. And one of those taxes that I talk about uh, that needs to be eliminated would be inheritance tax. Rich people do not pay inheritance tax. Inheritance tax is paid by the middle class and the uh, poor. 
And uh, it is nothing more than generational theft. We're stealing from one generation to the next. Why should you have to rebuy the family home, the family business, the family farm? This is not the uh, good policy and it is harming Americas and Americans and that is generational theft, like I said. E3, energy. Energy is the lifeblood of the American economy. It's a security issue. I'm going to say it was T. Boone Pickens that probably said it best. Drill, baby, drill, drill here and drill now. I don't care what form of energy we're talking about, whether we're looking at clean coal, the petroleum products, nuclear, wind, solar, hydroelectric. We need all forms of energy going forward in America. We cannot hamstring ourselves or our economy for a pie in the sky dream of uh, renewable energy. Eventually, a renewable form of energy could win out, but that's not today. And to uh, think otherwise is foolish. And bringing our energy from overseas uh, does not help the world from an ecological standpoint. You're now trucking this stuff all the way across the nation. Living in central Mississippi, I'm watching train full of train car of uh, coal headed to the coast. We have no coal fire plants down there that I'm aware of. And what's happening is that's being loaded on container ships and it's going overseas. China, you bet your butt, has coal-fired plants. They're using that coal elsewhere. We need to use it here in our country where we have the ability to scrub that coal and make things better for our nation and for our people. Well, Ron, I, <clears throat> excuse me, my, my allergies, I apologize. I think, your okay. dis I think your district is a perfect example of Democrats destroying America. And I think your bullet point plans uh, to reverse that are excellent. Uh, let's switch over to a, a, some current events for a moment. Um, the entire nation has not forgotten what just happened recently. I mean, essentially, President Trump was arrested. Um, what, yes, are your thought, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, if, if somebody is uh, really guilty of a crime, you know, you, you need to prosecute that. But this is nothing more than a witch hunt. They're trying to eliminate him from being able to run against whoever the Democratic challenger is. They know that he is a formidable adversary, and I believe that President Trump will be the 47th president of the United States with uh, you know, the work of we Americans behind him. We cannot let this country continue down the path of uh, the Bidens, the Obamas, the Clintons. These people have been bad for America. They believe in the new world order. The new world order is nothing more than the selling out of the American people, the American way of life. We must defend our nation against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Since I'm on a veterans group, we all took that same oath of office. We're all brothers and alumnus of the DD-214. And that uh, oath of office that we took had no expiration date on it. You know, the support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I'm ready to take the mantle of leadership and push forward for the American people. And one of those other things that's not in your news, but is in our news about the second congressional district, you hear a little bit about Jackson water. Well, it's not just Jackson water, but the Yazoo Delta portion of uh, the Mississippi, which composes a large percentage of the second congressional district has a thing called the Yazoo pump project. It's been going on since the 1940s and is what it is happened is it causes the Yazoo uh, Delta to flood out. And uh, there was a project to go forward. And uh, it was the last November that Benny Thompson, the congressman in the uh, second congressional district, got it shut down that would have prevented that flooding. Well, that uh, hamstrings or stops the use of a lot of the farmland there. And if we had the Yazoo pump project in place, then we could be growing winter wheat and food is national security. You let the people go hungry for three days and you'll have rioting in the streets. And uh, they say, well, this will cause ecologic damage. Well, I don't believe that to be true, because if you look along the Mississippi River, the Ohio River, we have such pump projects all up and down the river. It did not cause ecologic damage there. They built the levees and it creates basically a bathtub situation. Now the water gets backed up behind the levee and floods out these farmlands and these people's homes. And we need to change that. Well, yes, you do. And I'm sure that you will work on that when you're a member of Congress. Ron, how could people across the country find your website to support you? That's, uh, I appreciate that. 
go to voteroneller.com. That's voteroneller.com. You can also get me on the phone at 888-ELLER-22. That's 888-355-3722. Because in 22, I started the mission to help save America. And unlike Joe Biden, I know my phone number. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I personally support Ron. And um, we have a state chapter in his state forming that I know is going to support him. And uh, I'll be in your state May 9th. And we look forward to seeing you again there, sir. I look forward to seeing you there. Also, um, one of those things that we also have here in Mississippi, we have a, a term limits chapter, which I happen to be the chairman for term limits. That's right. And th that, that's a thing that we need to really push. You look at career politicians, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Benny Thompson, who's been there for 30 years. Well, we need term limits for these people so that we can get a new breath of fresh air there. Psalms 109.8. May his days be few. May another take his position of leadership. Hoorah. Well, amen to we said in the army, hoorah. That's right, sir. A a amen to that as well on this Sunday. And I will see you May 9th. You take care now. Thank you, sir. Looking forward to seeing you again, Stan. Take care now, everyone.